Psalms 102. A prayer of the afflicted when he is overwhelmed and poured out his complaint before the Lord. Well, I guess that title sums it up what this psalm's about. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let me cry, let my cry come unto thee. It's a prayer to trouble. If we return back to this as previous psalms has talked about when we think that God doesn't hear our prayer, which he does. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I answer me that when I call, answer me speedily. Well, we want to answer quick. God's going to answer within his time. God is in no rush. God is, in, is not impatient. Everything is according to his will, and everything will be done by his own timing. And we've got to live with it. What are we going to do? It's not telling you not to pray to God. It's just Wait on the Lord, the Bible says. For my days are consumed like smoke. Well, you watch smoke, it's, it's not very long. It just fades right off into nothing. And my bones are burned as in hearth. Well, two things to mention of, of where fire is. The bones darkened. You're going to see from this psalm here, affliction, being overwhelmed, will cause some medical problems in your, in your body. It will cause an early death. It will cause problems in your bone. Listen, a lot of, a lot of these problems that we have today is our own affliction. Worrying is not healthy. And yet between Genesis 1 and Revelation 22, you cannot find the word worry. Worry is unhealthy. And it's not something that you go running to a psychiatrist. It's something you go running to God on your knees. And then today I'm amazed at the times that I, I see a TV that you run across you need a whole commercial just for the side effect of this medication today. I mean, you're talking about side effects of these medication, you know, cancer. Yeah, but somebody's going to think about taking this pill. Oh, yeah, I, I got a sound mind now, but now I got to have chemotherapy. Death. Well, yeah, I guess if you take a pill and you die from it, I guess... All your problems will be gone. You got to realize that some of the health problems in your life is because of your own self. Needless. My heart is smitten. Broken hearted. And withered like grass. Dead. Small. No life. So that I forget to eat my bread. Alright. With affliction some people don't eat. There's no appetite. Your forgetfulness. You don't see affliction. Overwhelm. Complaint. Trouble. You don't see that as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. There's something wrong when you step outside the fruit of the Spirit. You can have victory. Jesus said, cast your burdens upon him. He said, ask, seek, knock. Oh, I'm in this trouble, I'm in this problem. Well, there's a thing, you know what? All right, I got a problem in my life. You take it to the Lord in prayer. You trust in the Lord with it, and you get on your life and you live. You don't dwell on it. 
and you do better. The next opportunity. If you are overwhelmed because someone has died and you did not witness to him, okay, well, repent, get it under the blood, and start witnessing. I have failed in this point in my life. Put it under the blood, get it right with the Lord, and pick yourself up and get right with your life. By reason of the voice of my groaning, agony, voice of groaning is not good for your voice in your throat. My bones cleave to my skin. You can find that in Job 19.20 and Lamentations 4.8. It's wasting away. It is you're being consumed. Your flesh is being consumed. You ever see pictures of someone you know who hasn't eaten, like we talked about? Man, you can, you can count the ribs. As that flesh is attached to the bones, you can see the bone. I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert, and that's solitaire, lonely. That is the wrong thing. That is one of the reasons why you should be in a Bible-believing church and pray for one if there's one not in your area. You're not to go run to an unsaved person, whether it be a professional or friend. You're to run to a Christian who knows the word. You're not to be lonely. Elijah got to the point in his life where he went off all by himself with no one else. And that ruined his ministry. God told him three things. And the only thing he did was he anointed Elisha. And he did that with a bad attitude. When he was supposed to, uh, one of them was supposed to anoint Jehu to be the next leader. He never did that. Elisha did that. Elisha's servant. You gotta be, now there's times, now listen, Jesus went off alone to pray to the Father. There are times to be alone when you're reading your Bible, uh, when you're praying to the Lord. Just also have time of loneliness, but not when you're afflicted. You know, the, the devil will get into your heart. You will get into your own brain and start thinking stupid and unneedless things that, that need not to be thought. I watch and I am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. That's not the thing when you're afflicted. My enemies reproach me all the day. And they that are mad against me are sworn against me. All right. Well, you do have enemies. Everybody does. And if you're a Christian that does right, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's going to happen. Get over it. Get on. You never seen Jesus have a sissy fit. He continued to the cross. He continued all the way to Calvary's Hill and got the victory. You continue to have the walk that Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. You do that with what God has for the will of your life, and you got victory. What is 70 or 80 years on this earth? 90, maybe even 100. It may seem long, but listen, when you get to a point in your life, ages is like, we're done with another year. <laughs> we're done with another month. Today is the 5th or the 16th, 2014. Let me ask you a question. This day in 2013, what was your worry? What was that big concern? What was that thing that was going to end your entire life? And what are you doing today? And what have you done? What victory have you got in your life? For I have eaten ashes like bread. 
Oh, ashes is like Job put ashes upon his head in, in sorrow and mingled my drink with weeping. That, that's not. Yeah, you're to cry. But when you cry to excessive, even Jesus wept. But the maniac in Gadara was, was crying all the time. Stupid thing I grew up with, you know, men don't cry. That, that's so stupid. Crying is right, but too much crying to excess is wrong. Anything to excess is wrong. Listen, you, you can have a pizza. Eat too much pizza and your stomach ain't going to be happy. God gave, us, gave man the ability to have one wife. Solomon had a thousand of them. It caused troubles and problems. We are to take care of our bodies. There are things in our body that we are to have. Listen, you can have vitamin C in your body, but too much vitamin C will kill you. Too much of anything will kill you. But not having enough will kill you. You gotta find a medium of your life. Because of thy indignation, that's extreme anger, and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. That's a charge to God. Why do we always blame God? Satan did Job in. Psalm in his prayer, if there be no rain or there be mildew or there be pestilence, if there be war because of sin. And God said when he answered Psalm, yeah, if I hold, withhold the rain, if I bring people into the land to do it because of your sin. When you're in affliction, you got to realize what is the three causes. Is it really God? And don't blame them if it's not. Is it Satan? Or are you doing it? My days are like a shadow that declines. And that's a sundial. Type. Once that shadow goes and becomes night, it's gone. You can't bring back that same shadow of that day. And a shadow itself. It's quick. It's gone. What is a shadow? What is a man's life? You take any person that missed the boat in Noah's day. Any one person. What what was their life for? As they are now burning in, in the hell. I am withered like grass. Again, that expression that we used it was used before. It's useless. It's dead. No life. Bent over. But thou, paragraph. Now we're going to get off the affliction. We're going to get off the complaint. We're going to get off the misery. And we're going to get on God. That's the answer. What you read about in verses 1 through 11 are the Jews as a nation. That has been their whole history and that's going to be their future. And that's them today. For, but thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever. True. God is always eternal. For thy remembrance unto all generations. How many generations of people are going to be in glory? In New Jerusalem, in New Earth, in New Heavens. 
that will be there and remember what the Lord has done for them. Quite a few. Even the angels will have remembrance of when God created them. The cherubim. Remember when God gave them life. Thou shalt arise. And the Bible speaks of as Jesus Christ arising for the second advent. Stephen said, I saw Jesus standing and have mercy on Zion for the time of favor, excuse me, for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. It hasn't come yet. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, Zion stones, and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. The millennium can't be a second advent because the Bible says he has a name that no man knows. When the millennium, they're going to know who he is. And all the kings of the earth, thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, Jerusalem, Mount Moriah, the temple. The Lord is going to build that temple in the millennium. He shall appear in his glory. The glory of the Messiah finally approved by, well, not should say approved, but uh, accepted by the Jews. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. He hears. He listens. This shall be written for the generation to come. You're reading this today. And you're given comfort to pray to the Lord. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he has looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From the heaven did the Lord behold the earth. God looks about. The, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold the evil and the good. We read today in our reading today. The, the eyes of the Lord are upon the earth. All right, let's get down with reality to hear the groaning of the prisoner. People groan. There are Christians in agony today. You know, there are Christians today, they may never get their prayer answered for relief. Paul had, had a thorn in his flesh. He sought the Lord three times. And God said, no. Well, I'll give you enough grace to get through it. To loose those that are appointed to death. You know, there's coming a day that there's going to be some Christians that the Lord's going to call and they will never see death. Even though they're appointed once to die. And after this, the judgment. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion. And praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. Now that comma or colon, excuse me, semicolon, after Jerusalem in 21. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and praise in Jerusalem. That's the first advent. When the people are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. That is the second advent. They're not serving the Lord today. He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. Well, the Bible says that the Lord has pleasure in the death of his saints. Or maybe you should shorten your own days. Now I can name a fistful. Not honoring the mother and father. Smoking, drinking, rebelling against God. A total de dedicated life of rebelling against God. Not looking both ways before crossing the street. 
not adhering to what a doctor tells you what to do. Being somewhere where you're not supposed to be will shorten your day. Touching something you're not supposed to touch will shorten your day. They tell you if you see a power line on the ground, don't touch it. And there have been people whose lives have been shortened because they walk over to it and grab it. I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Everybody wants to live longer. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, creation, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. You mean it didn't come from this particle that blew up? So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll intermeld, we'll marry evolution into Christianity. We'll have something called theistic evolution. God made it and then this left it. Boom. If God left it, then why did God come down on this earth and die for our sins? Explain that, Mr. Theistic Evolutionist. God did not leave it because he came down and he died and he bled and he rose from the grave for me. I'm his creation. We all look like Adam. So, they shall perish. Oh, you mean Mother Earth is going to go bye-bye? Yeah, the Big Bang is yet to happen, Peter says. But thou shalt endure. Even though this planet and the heavens are going to be gone, God will always be God. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. It's waxing old today. As a, vest, as a vesture shalt thou change them. Like dirty clothes. God will just throw it off and change it. He'll take the cursed, stained, filthy garments that Adam took that fruit. And he'll give a what? A new heaven. A new Jerusalem. A new earth. A new garment. A stinking diaper that this world and this universe is today. And God will change it. And they shall be changed. But thou art the same. God is always God and will be God. The holy God. The righteous God. And thy years shall have no end. God will never die. You know you got a guy over there in Italy. Says he's, 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 the, he's God. But yet within a few years he'll wither like grass and die. I guess he's not a God. Thy children of thy servants shall continue. I'm a church children of, of God. I'm a child of God. I'm going to continue. And their seed shall be established before thee. All those that have done what God told them to do by their dispensation, by their salvation plan, it's going to be before God. Only those that rebelled against God won't be there. And anybody that we witnessed to or had part of witnessing to, missionary or whatever, that is accounted to us and the glory you'll get to see them in heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and by you had part in planting or watering. Oh Lord my God. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. 